Hello. Welcome to A Creative Approach Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Poirier-Brody. It's my delight to share today a conversation with Ken Oliver. Ken is an accomplished artist and designer with experience in sales and marketing. He has traveled the world in his sales career and now continues those global adventures as a developer of art products and an art teacher. Yet Ken finds a lot of inspiration for his creative approach in his beloved hometown. Ken's enthusiasm for his life and work is infectious and joyful. Join me today as we hear his story. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show today. I'm really excited that we have Ken Oliver as our guest today. Hi, Ken. Hey, Karen. How are you? Hi, everybody. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you? Just fine. Well, I understand you a little bit of a cold here, so we'll <laughs> be understanding. You're recovering, I guess, right? I'm all good. I just sound a little bit froggy, but I'm all good. Oh, great. As a guest on this podcast, I think I've given you a little bit of an idea that what we want to know is a little bit about you. So I was wondering if you could tell us just in your own words what it is that you do. Sure. I um uh... I guess you would say I'm an artist, but I'm also a marketer. I work with companies to develop uh, craft products that we bring uh, to the craft and arts industry. And uh, it's very exciting because I get to use um, a broad range of skills that I've developed throughout my um, career in sales and bring what I know about marketing and product development into the arts and crafts side of the business. And it's really, it's fun and it's really fascinating. Well, that's great. What are some of the products that you're working with right now? Well, um, I've been doing this for a couple of years, and um, it's been really amazing because we've developed a line of paints. We have uh, paper products uh, and surfaces, uh, also canvas bags. And a lot of the products that we develop revolve around um, one of the first products that we brought out called Color Burst. And color burst is really exciting. It's some, it says what it does. It's color that bursts uh, right in front of your eyes. And it's a watercolor product. And to get really amazing, beautiful results, you just spritz your paper with water and tap on a little bit of color burst. And what's so unique about color burst in the market is it's watercolor, but it's not a cake and it's not in a tube. It's actually like a pigment powder. So because it's a powder form, it's really super intense and you can get brilliant, brilliant colors. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Uh, you work with that and uh, it's great. I mean, the color is so intense and so, it has some cool effects. It really does. You can create uh, starburst effects, fireworks effects, um, bokeh effects that look like, you know, bubbles of light. Um, you also can use it to paint with. So whether you're a crafter or a card maker or a fine artist and you want to paint with it, uh, Color Burst gives you a really uh, broad range of uh, ways to express yourself artistically. Yeah, and I've seen, well, of course, you're an artist, so you've used it in um, pieces of art. And you also have a team of people who work with you um, with these products that you have, correct? Sure. I work with the design team. We have people all around the world. I think we um, we have people in Ireland and Germany and um, in the UK and uh, in Australia and New Zealand and, um, and then all over the US and Canada who submit pieces of art to us uh, regularly that um, I share on Instagram under Ken Oliver Crafts or Ken Oliver Crafts Design Team. And um, also then on my blog, Ken's World in Progress. So we share those works and it's amazing because they come all over the, from all over the world. And we have lots of submissions that come from India. Um, the colors seem to uh, work well with the kind of art created there. And it's really fun to see the products being used all over the world. Well, yeah. Oh, India. That's really cool because there are some be- oh, those beautiful colors and things like saris. And they have, don't they have those festivals where they sort of sp- there's flowers all over or they spray yes. kind of a powder around on people. <laughs> See, so it's like that really works well with this product. <laughs> it's interesting. A friend of mine, um, she lives in, in London, but um, she is uh, from India. And uh, recently for 
uh, their festival, she used color burst and um, my die cut flowers to create a beautiful pristinium that was the stage for their festival. And it was, it was quite lavish. It was really beautiful. Oh, I can imagine that would be gorgeous. So that's really fun. (laughs) And cutting across all kinds of cultures here with your stuff. That's great. It blows my mind every day because I live in a really small town in Indiana and, um, it, it's like Stars Hollow if you watch Gilmore Girls. It's it's very quaint. We we're founded in 1803, and we're one of the biggest river ports in um, before 1860 in this part of the country. In fact, we're like the most bustling river port between um, Cincinnati and New Orleans. And so I live in this tiny town. So it's really cool for me sitting in rural Indiana to see somebody use my products in India or in London for, you know, multicultural events like that. It's really cool. (laughs) For sure. And you live in a beautiful setting. I've seen some pictures of yours and you practically just like look out on the river, don't you? I do. In fact, um, I'm sitting in the front room of my studio right now and my view is the beautiful Ohio River, and um, the Ohio River is a mighty river. It flows into the Mississippi, and in fact, the uh, the volume of water that's in the Mississippi River, the most volume of water comes from the Ohio River, so it's very wide, and it's uh, so picturesque. It's uh, It's really quite beautiful. So that's a good inspiration for you. <laughs> it absolutely is. Uh-huh. Fuel it's- some of that creativity. (laughs) It's so beautiful that um, we have lots of tourists who come here. And uh, the front of my studio, I I live in a building that's um, over 150 years old. So it's, uh, you know, white brick. And um, uh, it's so pretty that people stop and pose and take pictures in front of my doors all the time. And so it's really fun for me to be able to kind of share that with the bigger um, uh, crowd too. I love to put uh, seasonal decor outside and put things outside that people will like to take their pictures with. And it's really quite fun because there are always people taking pictures in front of my doors every day of the week. Now, do you go out and meet some of these folk? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, I put a bench outside um, because it's so pretty. The river view is so pretty that people like to stop and sit and enjoy the view. And often when I'm coming in or going out, there'll be people sitting at my front door. And of course, I stop and talk to them. And I've met, seriously, I've met people from all around the world um, who are visiting here um, to uh, see some of our beautiful sights and uh, enjoy our uh, 19th century culture. <laughs> <laughs> and your your town really, well, that's really swell that you have a chance to talk to these people and to meet them and that you can share a little bit of your life with them. And I think it's kind of cool that your town really does capitalize on its history, doesn't it? Absolutely. In fact, um, we're a Main Street community in the U.S. and we're recognized as um, as an important historical uh, site because we are one of the oldest river ports in um, in the U.S. In fact, when our town was settled in 1803, um, Indiana wasn't even a state yet. So uh, we were settled right at, um, at the after the uh, the Louisiana Purchase. And so whenever uh, settlers came here, the river was still owned by France, and um, we have a very long history of being a multicultural community because of the traffic on the river. Um, Our town was settled by immigrants from Germany and from England and from Scotland and from uh, really all over Europe and uh, other parts of the world. So, uh, and another thing that's pretty awesome. (laughs) Interesting too about our town and our architecture. um, Most of the architecture predates the civil war. So um, we have, federal style buildings and Greek revival style buildings. And because we traded so much with Europe through New Orleans, a lot of the buildings here are very ornate and have a fancy ironwork like you would see on homes and businesses in New Orleans. So we have a very unique place in American history um, as a river town that a lot of people really don't uh, know about or haven't heard about. Uh, interesting. 
Yeah, and we've been talking on and on about your town, and we haven't even mentioned the name. <laughs> I live in a town that's called Newburgh, Indiana. Newburgh, Indiana, yeah. So there, folks who are listening, if you want a really fun, little, interesting, historical place to visit that's a interesting part of um, the history of America and of river traffic in America... Now, uh, that would be a good place to visit. Do you have, um, speaking of that, do you ha- are there cruise boats? I know there are some that go on the Mississippi. Do, are there some that come up into oh, the Ohio that are sure. international cruise boats? Sure. Um, those same boats, and they're called um, paddle wheelers, um, uh, cruise up and down the Ohio River. And um, they're boats that are replicas of the uh, steam boats that um, navigated the waterways in the 19th century. And so uh, some of the better known ones that come by are the Delta Queen, the Mississippi Queen, the American Queen. And um, these boats um, offer uh, tours. You know, you can cruise on them up and down the river um, between cities, or you can also take uh, short cruises, you know, like excursions. And um, I've been on a couple of the excursions before. And what's so cool about it is uh, the boat will usually have a calliope on it. Do you know what a calliope is? Um, it's a little kind of covered area. Or, no. Or, or, oh, no, the calliope is the um, music instrument. And it's like yeah. uh, it's uh, powered by uh, steam and it blows steam through little pipes that are oh, actually right. whistles, and it makes a very unique kind of sound. It sounds like music you might hear at the circus that goes, do, 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 do. Yeah, right. And so um, in, in, ta- in the town where I live, it's very exciting when one of the boats cruises by because they're usually playing the calliope. And um, the people in my neighborhood were so excited by that. We run outside and wave at the people on the boats. So <laughs> it's, it's really fun. I guess. And, you know, I was on a river cruise in Europe this year, and I think that Viking, you know, the long ships that sail on um, the rivers in Europe, uh, and I think they have one in China, and I believe they're going to be building a ship to go on the Mississippi, maybe the Ohio as well. So hmm, maybe awesome. people who like those that kind of cruising might have an opportunity to take a cruise, and it maybe we'll stop in Newburgh. We'll have to see. Now, is Newburgh your hometown? Is that where you're from originally? Yeah, you know, I grew up here, and um, after high school, I moved to, well, I moved away. I went to college in Nashville, Tennessee, and um, I literally have chased my career all over the world. Um, <laughs> I worked in sales and product development, and um, but I worked in the uh, seasonal business, And that means uh, Christmas and Halloween. So if you ever went into a store during Christmas, and I don't care what store it is, whether it would be Walmart, Target, Hobby Lobby, any of those big stores that have like the mega Christmas departments. Yeah. I used to sell that and that's what I did. And um, so I literally have been to China like 24 times. Ooh. I haven't I been once and I want to go. It's on my yeah. list. <laughs> I've traveled with my career. I've traveled all over the world, whether it be to uh, Europe, to trade shows, to China for product development and for sales meetings, or really all over the world to work with my customers. And so um, a few years ago, I don't really know what happened. I woke up one day and I said to myself, I'm going to move back to Newburgh. And um I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what I was really going to do with my life once I moved back to the Midwest. And as soon as I moved back, though, things started happening. My phone started ringing. Manufacturers started contacting me about working with them to develop product. And um, and I'm going along for the journey. And it's really interesting because every day brings a new opportunity. And in addition to um, working on product development, I also travel around the world teaching. So this year, for example, I've had the opportunity to teach in Japan and in Germany and in the UK twice and in Canada and then all over the United States. And that is really the funnest part of what I do because I get to travel and uh, work with people uh, to help them learn more about art and making art. Now, art, does that go back to your childhood? Were you always an artist and drawing and doing things like that when you were a kid? 
Yeah, of course. And in fact, um, I didn't know that everybody um, doesn't make art, you know, like I, because <laughs> in my family, it's such a big thing because I come from a family of makers. My mom does it better than Martha. Trust me. <laughs> there's every, any kind of craft that ever my mom has done it. And I grew up in a house where my dad, my mom, my, we all made things because it was just, you know, what we did. And um, so, yes, although I didn't study art in college, I uh, I took as many art classes as I could in college. But ultimately, I triple majored in history, English and German. And um, I had enough art classes to minor in art. But I just, you know, I, I yeah. just didn't I just took art classes because that's what fascinates me. That's cool. And your family, I know they help you with things because you post pictures every now and then of getting ready for some event and there's pictures of your folks helping you out. Yeah, that was the other unexpected perk to uh, moving back home was that uh, my family's around and they're more than willing to um, step in and help me make kits for classes and help me prep um, any kind of materials that I need for classes, which is really fun. I never would have imagined uh, that um, being the biggest perk and the most enjoyable thing that I get out of living uh, back in the Midwest. Yeah, it's fun when your family can take part and take interest in what you're doing. That's really great. Oh, it's a, yeah, I'm blessed for that. <laughs> and I imagine traveling all over the world as you do and being in a place where you grew up, there's a lot of uh, sources of inspiration for the kinds of things that you do create. Absolutely. Every day uh, in my neighborhood, I'm inspired by, at this very moment, I'm looking out at a, a stand of maple trees that has just changed to the most beautiful burnt orange color. that I, It's so beautiful, I couldn't describe it. Mm. Um, and I'm also inspired by the color of the water and the color of the sky. Um, I have a laboratory here of inspiration because there are antique stores and boutiques all around. So if I ever hit a stumbling point, I can take a little stroll outside and um, find something uh, that is very inspiring just in whatever's happening on the street on that given day. Well, you've used things from your hometown to inspire some of your paper line and things. Is that right? Yeah. In fact, like there's a whole line of papers called Hometown Papers that are inspired by the architecture and the charm of the small town that I live in. Um, and there's even a line called Hometown Christmas with uh, – photo images of the town decked out for Christmas as it would have been um, in 19th century America. That's awesome. Do people dress up in costumes at Christmas time around there? In fact, um, this past weekend was just um, our Christmas celebration. And for um, two days, um, our town is filled with volunteers who dress up in historical costumes and Ooh. walk around and sing. <laughs> And um and spread good tidings and goodwill to everybody who comes to town. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds really great. How fun. What a fun environment to work in and create in. It's and fantastic. You recently moved to a new studio. Do you have a little bit more room for classes or more room for doing things there or just a better setup? Yeah. In fact, I just took over a brand new studio space that's on the first floor of the same building that I live in. And that affords me a lot of new opportunities because there's space that lets me seat about 10 people. So now I can offer classes um, in town. And um, that's very exciting. And it also gives me a space that's right on the street. Prior to this, my studio was on the third floor. And since I'm on the ground floor now, I get to see more of what's happening right on the street every day, which is, it's really fun. Yeah, you're not too far from um, like Louisville, Kentucky, where my husband's from, and I, I that that sounds tempting. That maybe I can coordinate a visit to his hometown and arrange a class with Ken. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have to think on that one. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, yeah, yeah Louisville is only about um, about two hours uh, east uh -huh. of where I live. It's yeah. a very easy drive, and it's a beautiful town to visit. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Now, Ken, we were discussing creativity, and you've been all over the world um, 
and I'm sure all the things you've seen and experienced have inspired your creativity as well as the wonderful place you um, live in and work in. And I was wondering if there are things you wanted to share about the creative approach with our audience. Sure. You know, um, I draw inspiration from many places. It can be the leaf of a plant. It can be the color of the sky. Most typically, I'm inspired by things in nature. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that my subject matter is also always nature. But um, I'm inspired by usually from nature, colors, textures, patterns. Um, there's a time in the afternoon where I live um, where the sunlight glints off of the water as the river flows by. And it literally looks like um, glitter sparkling along on the river. And it happens, you know, like at a certain time in the afternoon. And to me, that is the most beautiful, inspiring scene um, ever that, you know, like to me, it just like makes me filled. It, it kind of feeds my um, my little creative genie, if you will. And it makes <laughs> me think of, it does. It makes me think of things. Uh, that are outside of the box and different. And that would be the other thing that I would also say is that uh, try doing different things. So maybe if you're a watercolor paint, painter, try something that is three-dimensional every now and then. Because if you take what you've learned in one medium and apply it to another, you'll find that it will actually inspire you or uh, push you past you know, limits that you might have had in your original medium. I think that's wonderful advice. And of so, course, you mentioned, you know, the beauty. And then you said glitter, which is, you know, the word right. that, that just that word alone inspires those of us who are um, <laughs> mess about in crafts. <laughs> right. But yes, but no, I mean, there's some really, aside from crafts, some really beautiful art inspiration that can come from, um, looking around us. But I, I think one of the most important things you can do is try new things. And yeah. because that will spur you in other areas of your work. So, you know, I, I like to make cards, but I like to bring my watercolor painting into cards. And that lets me make really unique and different cards than what uh, most people might be making. Um, doodle. Doodling is one way to spawn creativity and not, you know, like not with any end in mind, free form. It's almost like stream of consciousness. Doodling will uh, prompt your mind to see a shape or a line that you might be able to use in another piece of work. Or maybe as a solution to a problem, perhaps in business or in uh, education or something. Yeah. I'm sure it can inspire people's creativity in a lot of ways. I um, have always taken a very creative approach to my business. Uh, when I was in sales, I really liked to uh, create creative deals, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I was able to like, um, sell by using creative deals. I also used a lot of creativity in the kinds of presentations that I did. That all plays into being an artist because you learn from uh, being creative in all aspects of your life, and it has an effect on your art. Um, you know what? Aside from being an artist, I'm an artist in the kitchen, too. I can cook like you would not believe. Oh, and, <laughs> now I'm definitely coming. <laughs> and, to me, like one art inspires the other. Um, uh -huh. I could make a pie, for example, that is, oh, it's the most beautiful pie I've ever seen. Uh -huh. I'd love to take a picture of that because that photo is a piece of art. Oh, and I bet it tastes wonderful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this time of year, I love the kind of pies you make at this time of year. The seasonal pies during the holiday season are fantastic. Sweet potato pie, mm. <laughs> pecan pie, mincemeat pie with those rich flavors of cloves and citrons. Oh, it's nothing like it. Oh, making my mouth water. Sounds divine. 
Well, I think you've given us a lot of insights into your creative approach and ideas that can inspire others. And I really appreciate being able to visit with you today. Well, thank you so much for uh, for asking me to uh, join you on your podcast. I'm really quite um, honored that you, that you thought of me, and I was happy to uh, to share some thoughts with you today. Well, thanks so much, and um, thank you to all the listeners for listening today. And um, you can find Ken where? Why don't you give us places that people can find you, Ken? I am all over the place. <laughs> um, I'd be on Instagram as Ken Oliver Crafts or Ken Oliver Crafts Creative Team. You will find me on my blog at Ken's World in Progress on Facebook as Ken Oliver Crafts or Ken Oliver. Wonderful. Well, thanks. Um, So folks can look you up. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you, listeners, for being with us at the podcast today. Please visit our webpage at www.acreativeapproachpodcast.com, where you will find show notes for this and other episodes and our social media links. I hope you will join us in future conversations as we explore a creative approach.